we have more updates in reference to Alabama jail conditions, still appalling, still not remedied. Here's some of the video. You say you assaulted by Sergeant Thomas? Yeah. Sergeant Thomas? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they. There was another dude, 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 he had a name on the shirt. And they struck you in your arm. Both arms were just that one arm when you did it. Both arms. And they knocked the one looking at your hand. Your hand, too. You had the hand on your face trying to block it out. And I want to see this injury at the head because it looked like it needs stitches. That injury, that injury right there definitely needs stitches. And did they, did the nurses, what did the nurses say? You looked at it and sent me back down the hall. And this one here is swollen and this look bad. And what they say about that? No scan, test for head injury, anything. I ain't getting it. Now, Stephen, I just got to ask you about your chronic illness right now. To my understanding, you say you got some form of cancer. Can you explain what exactly it is? Yeah, my name is Jacob to begin with, uh, Alan Jacob. And it's a thoracic lymphatic. Thoracic emphatic? Lymphatic. Lymphatic cancer. Yeah. What stage would you say your cancer is in? I would say it's in stage three by now, but they're telling me it's in stage two which is untreatable. Okay, you think, you, they telling you it's stage two, but you think it's in stage three because of the weight you have lost. How long has it been since you um, was diagnosed? Uh, about four years ago. So they saying that they won't even treat it until it's stage three. Until it's deadly. Until it's deadly. So it's and they will, and they, but ain't it's deadly. How much weight have you lost? 100 pounds. Now, do you got your ID? Your ID yeah. or your picture? Okay. Let, let us see your yeah, picture or your ID. Show a you previous a ID picture. Wow. And this is you. Hold, let me hold. And this is you. How long ago this been? Not even three years. You was clearly fat. Two and a half years. But well, I just say healthy. Yeah, I weigh 200 pounds. Just shy of 200 pounds. Healthy. Wow. 200 pounds. There's more. Here it is. Or, or, or what kind of action did he take in saying that he would try to help you with it? I would, carry it, I would go home with it. That it would be he said you would go home with it. He wasn't concerned about the not growing because it has been growing over a period of time. Right, right. Dr. Yes. Allen and Dr. Stone, he had ventures prison here in Alabama, and they said you would just be with us. You would be with it. will stay with you until you release, right? right? Can we see it if you don't mind? Sure. Wow. That is clear, and it's been it's growing bigger and bigger. You can feel it, and you get a mirror to look to the back of it, and they tell you that um, wow, this is big, and they tell you that this is crazy. Uh, no kind of way it just occurred, and I went to the infirmary, and they ain't did nothing about it. And they ain't did nothing about it. Nothing about it. Can the people, if you don't mind, can they see what the issue is? Wow, wow. Okay, a good look at that. And is it burn? Is it irritating? Is yeah, it very irritating? Very irritating. Very irritating. Now, how long you has your ear been like that, man? Well, about a week now. About a week now, and it occurred from an altercation, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and then what is the doctors? Why haven't the doctors or did anything? You shouldn't even be. You should be in a free world hospital right now. Your entire ear is swollen up, man. <laughs> Just looking at it here, man. That's and, and, and that's just don't make sense. Now, what is the doctor saying when you tried to get help in relation to this this injury? That uh, uh, ice to uh, ice on. They say put ice on the head. They gave anything for the pain? No, not really. Nothing for the pain. Well, this is just another example of the atrocities we face here in the Alabama prison system. We hear adventures, and these are the things that we face every day. If medical staff is a joke. It's medical neglect is at an all-time high, and doctor's morale is at an all-time low, man. And uh, these, if these videos don't prove it, we'll never understand it. Put up the picture. We have more, okay? Since our last report, there has allegedly been no charges made within the Atlanta, excuse me, Alabama Department of Corrections, despite attention being brought forth from the alleged medical neglect. Nard Jemison, an inmate at Ventress Correctional Facility, has been documenting the negligence behind bars, putting his own safety at risk. Just recently, he was threatened by a captain 
according to him, who he says stated she was going to get him injured for exposing the truth. Jameson is currently in fear for his life and further retaliation. And we consider him to be a whistleblower. Here's more. My name is Bernard Jemison, currently incarcerated at Dutch's Correctional Facility. And I had the risk of, of, of my safety. I am uh, brought to the attention of medical um, neglect issues that, that are occurring inside this facility, this prison here in Alabama, and the deaths that are transpired that could have been prevented. A uh, number of atrocities committed through recklessness and, and just uh, negligence about this condition. As a result, my life has been threatened by the actions of uh, Captain Elizabeth um, Lassiter and uh, Lieutenant Walker, who was threatened to have me harmed. As a result, Captain Lassiter has uh, begun uh, doing security searches, conducting searches and searching down of the inmates, taking their contraband items, whether it be phone, cell phone, hair pieces, or whatever the case may be. And she's telling them directly that it's a result of me, my actions, because she disapproved of what I'm doing. In other words, to try to get inmates um, riled up at me or whatnot. And uh, basically, it's just an attempt on my life. I feel like it's important to notify the media that this administration, uh, Captain Lester and Lieutenant Walker, are basically trying to silence me by hopefully uh, causing harm to the degree of me possibly losing my life. And I, I think that those who I reached out to in the past, um, the King Center, um, Dr. Rashad Ritchie, a host of other news media outlets, The Guardian, uh, these people need to know firsthand what's going on in the, in the event that um, something tragic does happen, um, that these two will be here responsible. They'll be the direct result of any harm that I've seen. Thank you, dear brother, for your continued fight and leadership. Senator John Ossoff, dear friend, has been on the show multiple times, has also championed legislation to crack down on this kind of neglect and treatment. He has led investigations into federal prisons, exposing the nuances of criminality being done against human beings who are temporarily incarcerated. Assault seems to be a sport for correctional officers, sergeants and lieutenants. As it still is a daily occurrence, most often done unnecessarily and done with excessive force. Trevon Williams, AIS number 181201 was assaulted by Sergeant Thomas, Lieutenant Cannon as well as another officer, but Mr. Williams could not see his name tag according to him. They struck him repeatedly on both of his arms as he held his arms up trying to protect himself as well as strikes to his skull appeared to need stitches. He was seen by the nurses in the infirmary, but they did nothing except give him a sling. All of the attack was caught on camera in the infirmary, according to an anonymous vetted source. There's more. Mr. Lashley was involved in an altercation with a fellow inmate. And the result is this massive swelling of his ear that you saw when he went to the prison physician. He was instructed to put ice on it. Nolan Williams, AIS number three. Two, three, six, six, seven. Has had a large and still growing mass on his back that he fears may be cancerous. But the prison physicians, Dr. Stone, Dr. Allen, show no concern according to the source. But the prison physicians show no concern and stated he would be going home with the mass still on his back. They did no blood work, they did no diagnostic studies. These are just a few instances put up the picture. But hundreds, possibly thousands of incarcerated individuals are allegedly being neglected, turned away, written off inhumanely. Many of them are dying at the hands of prison employees because 
of their lack of willingness to make a simple change. Ventress Correctional Facility Warden, her name is Carol Williams, put her up. We reached out to Ventress for comment, did not receive a response. Ventress is just one of many prisons across the nation who lack any compassion or concern for the individuals and their living conditions, healthy health or safety. The billions of tax dollars we pay are supposed to be allocated to improve these institutions, but they don't. Nothing changes and they silence anyone who tries to make the public aware of the truth of what's happening. They don't want inmates to have a way of showing the world the wrong that takes place. Instead of trying to silence or punish these individuals, why doesn't the warden use her moral compass to fight for real change? So here's the thing. Right? These are human beings. And if you are a person who says, lock them up, throw away the key, I want you to remember your, your tax dollars, they take your money. They take your money, and your money goes to the guarantee of certain things for individuals who are incarcerated. Number one, their health. Yes, if you're incarcerated, you get guaranteed health. Care, insurance, they gotta take care of it. It's part of the plan. It's part of the law, it's the deal. It's what they have to do. You're also responsible for the safety. Here's the here's the part that really gets me um, more than upset. The same people who would tell me they don't give a damn about these individuals. Do you care about Crime, probably you do. You don't want crime in your community, right? Understand this, when rehabilitation is not happening inside of a prison facility, those individuals are coming back out. No rehabilitation, no skill, no education, just anger at how they were treated by the establishment there. It's a cause and effect relationship. If we don't understand that we're still part of the same human family, regardless of if somebody is temporarily incarcerated or not, that understanding that connection can create a better outcome for your local community and a better outcome for your children and your children's children if you just care about their outcome. It's a cause and effect. Dan, thoughts? Uh, it's- Difficult to gather thoughts because it's so heart wrenching. Those stories, those images. I'm glad there's um, that we're doing this reporting on the show to really bring a light to this because I think this is an angle that uh, media outlets and entities with so much power and you know big microphones aren't digging into as often as they should be doing. I, I think ultimately it gets down to. Where is justice being served in this country? You make a great point with like what our resources are supposed to be going to, but who is serving justice in this country? Because it's not just judges, it's not just people who are creating laws in this country. What you're also getting are that these wardens, these people who are running departments of corrections across this country in states all over, they're getting to decide death sentences. I mean, I even think of uh, Dexter Berry out of Florida just earlier this month, who died in jail custody because the, they wouldn't give him his heart transplant medications, right? Like, the, in that case, the people who are running that jail, that local police department, they are now judge, jury, and executioner. That is a regression back in Magna Carta, how we're supposed to have laws and have people be treated in society. It is a regression back to what society is supposed to have gotten to at this point. So it's important that we keep highlighting this too. Give people, like you said, an ability to rehabilitate, an ability to recover and not leave, not just with anger, but with a bunch of injuries, which makes it harder for them to reintegrate into society. Yep, that's right. Um, Reentry is a real thing. Well over 90% of people who are incarcerated, they come home. They come home, act like it, all right?